centro de la pampa vive un pimiento. Hello, I'm Patrick Barnard. It's a beautiful winter's day. We're in the winter of 2008-2009. Welcome to the seventh edition of the Pimento Report. For this seventh edition of the Pimento Report, we're going south to New York City to talk to a very unusual guy, Professor Bill Crane of the City University of New York. Professor Bill Crane, working with Dr. Junfeng Zhang at Rutgers University, has been one of the main voices in North America, calling for the testing of synthetic fields and a moratorium on their installation. This is the second video we've done with Bill Crane, and in the last 18 months, this story has moved quickly. Let's take a rapid look at the sequence of news events. Step one, April 2007, the public advocate of the city of New York, Betsy Gottbaum, calls for a moratorium on synthetic turf and immediate testing of all the synthetic fields in the New York City park system. She gives public support to Professor Crane's research. Step two, summer 2007, the full crane Zhang research program is blocked, says Crane, apparently by people who do not wish to see the scientific research done. Step three, spring 2008, New Jersey health officials close synthetic fields because of high lead content. Step four, November 2008, Crane and Zhang publish in the peer-reviewed Journal of Exposure Science and Environmental Epidemiology. They find lead is bioaccessible via ingestion in synthetic turf fields made with recycled rubber tire crumbs. In other words, if a child is playing on such a field and swallows particulate with lead, that lead may very well be absorbed. Step 5, December 2008. Because of high lead content, a synthetic field is closed in New York City's East Harlem. Public advocate Gottbaum again calls for a moratorium in New York City. Step 6, February 9, 2009. New York City officials say they will not use recycled rubber tire material in the future. They do not plan to remove synthetic turf in their 95 existing fields, but admit that fields overheat and, quote, could pose a health risk, unquote. Here we are in New York's West End Avenue on the Upper West Side, and we're going in this building to see Professor William Crane of the City University of New York. Can you tell us, please, what's the most important things that Dr. Zhang and you discovered? Well, we found that there are toxic chemicals in the turf, in both the blades and in the, in the rubber granules in the synthetic turf, but no one has known whether these could be absorbed into the body. So this is a, really the first attempt to investigate this and very important question. Uh, before that, there have, been, there have been other studies, but uh, they haven't been peer reviewed. Uh, and that's what we need, is, is more research and more very solid research. Synthetic Turf Council, which represents uh, the industry, the turf industry, has been saying that lead can, uh, while it's in there, they admit that there, are, there is lead in the granules and also in the uh, fibers. They've been saying that the lead cannot get into the body. It's too uh, tightly bound in there. Um, and they have theoretical reasons for that. But what we found is that the lead in both the granules and in the fibers can be absorbed in digestive fluids. We didn't put the lead in the human body, but we, uh, we did do simulations of digestive fluids and significant portions can be absorbed. Uh, they dissolve in the digestive fluids, the simulated digestive fluids, which means once dissolved they could get into the blood and then get in, go move into the brain or the other parts of the body. What did you find in terms of the rate of absorption of lead by, uh, by people through your simulation? The fractions that can be dissolved in the, uh, in, in the artificial digestive fluids are substantial. They're between about 28% and about 50 or 60% in that ballpark. So a good portion would be absorbed. That, that, that health scientists would consider that a very substantial portion. What is important about what you mentioned earlier is that even though the, the, the amount, the concentrations of, of lead are relatively small, and they've all been below the EPA standards in, this, in the studies that we've done, um, 
health scientists now think that any lead at all uh, poses a danger to children especially. The children are more vulnerable because they are still developing and any, ex any lead exposure, even one part per million, which is you know far below the 400 part per million that the, the EPA sets as its standard, even such small quantities can cause neurocognitive damage. I think that uh, children at least under the age of seven or so should be barred from all synthetic turf fields because young kids tend to put, just to be safe, young kids tend to put things in their mouths and they are developing. They're particularly vulnerable to toxic uh, exposures. The research indicates that it's uh, highly correlated with IQ loss. So you just can measure the IQ. So it's, that's very tangible. Uh, any amount of exposure can produce IQ loss. In fact, at the very lower levels, it produces disproportionate amount of IQ loss for some unknown reason. So it's, it's to some extent, um, it's more dangerous to uh, that to uh, that first absorption, that first ingestion is is the most dangerous. But the, also the lead accumulates; it doesn't just go away. So it accumulates, and so each time you're putting any in, you uh, you add to the risk. On December 22, 2008, when the New York City Parks Department announced it was closing Thomas Jefferson Park in East Harlem, it was because of the high lead levels, 500 parts per million, 100 parts per million higher than the Environmental Protection Agency limit. The next day, public advocate Gottbaum called again for a moratorium. I hope that there is some momentum developing. If it's not developing, then, then people are just putting their heads in the sand. Here you have um, a field that has uh, lead levels of 500 parts per million above the 400 parts per million EPA limit, which, as I said before, is, is way too high. No lead should be put in the environment. No, no lead should be added to the environment. It's where children play. I would keep making that point that the health scientists, uh, Phil Landrigan, uh, Lamphere, and others have insisted that no lead should be added to the environment. Lead, any lead is dangerous. I'm, you know, if I could scream that out from the rafters, I, I would because uh, that's not, that's getting lost. When you read this report, oh, it's 500 over 400. 400 is, is way too lax. 400, uh, the research uh, uh, does not justify using that standard, but the government officials continue to use that, th that standard. Governments have been negligent. Uh, if you look at the history of tobacco and the regulation, that took a long time to get to get notices for that. If you look at lead and gasoline, the history of that, uh, it took a long time to get lead out of gasoline. The government agencies have a terrible history in regulating for public health. In el centro de la pampa. Bill Crane and Dr. Zhang have wanted to study dermal contact and the potentially harmful molecules in synthetic turf materials. That effort has been temporarily blocked. But the state of Connecticut has just committed $200,000 for a year-long study of synthetic materials and the three chemical pathways, inhalation, dermal contact, and ingestion. Bill Crane praises that initiative, calling it groundbreaking, but stresses that it is only a beginning. This is Patrick Barnard saying goodbye for now for the Pimento Report. The health officials and the government officials are the, are the ones that uh, make me the angriest right now because this is their job to, to safeguard the public health. And if parents are lobbying, so what? Their job is to safeguard the public health. You have Betsy Gottbaum doing that in New York City, speaking out. But this is too, it's too rare. It's, it's much too rare. And, uh, uh, they need to shape up immediately. Thank you, Will. Okay.